Hello everyone, so in this lesson today we're going to do the questions that all grade 11s absolutely love. Alright, now that was a joke. In my time of tutoring, I have identified that 90% of students hate these kind of questions, where they do things like that and where they do things like that. The reason is, is you guys just have not, you haven't spent enough time with them. They are super easy. From now on, I want you to think of these as the easy mark questions. They really are. You just need to practice them. You need to truly understand what this thing means and what this means. And then you'll see that they're actually quite easy. I don't know why teachers don't spend enough time with this. Literally, you could take an hour and just explain it and then students would understand. But yeah. So let's have a look at exactly how these things work. So in this question, we're given a parabola. They've given us its equation, and then they've also given us a straight line, and we've got that equation over there. Question 1a says, for which values of x is f of x? Let's stop right there. What does f of x mean? If you've watched the previous videos on where I explain what this means, you must know that that means y. Okay? Some students still struggle with that. And then h of x is the y value of, so I'm going to say y value of parabola and y value of straight line. Now they're saying f of x and then they're doing this and then they're doing that. So what does this mean? Well, that this what this means is f of x bigger than g of x. Sorry, that's an h. f of x bigger than h of x, okay? So if we're talking about the y values, which is in this direction, we want to know where f of x, which is the parabola, is bigger than h of x. What that means is where is f of x higher than h of x? So where is the parabola above the straight line? So let's look at the different intervals, okay? So one of the inter so we look at our two intersection points, which are over there and there, and now we look at the interval. So let's look at the interval to the left which is this part here. Well, in that interval, we can see that the parabola is always above the straight line. I mean, if you if you look here, this point over here is above that point. This point over here is above that point. Okay, so you can see that the parabola is above. If we look at the interval in between, so between the letters B and E, we can see that the straight line is above. Okay, here's the straight line it's always above the parabola. Then if we look at the little interval to the right, which is this interval over here, we can see that once again the parabola is above. So where is the parabola above? Well, it's above in this interval and this interval. Great. Now, how do you give your answer? That is where we use the x values. Okay, so it's a bit of a weird thing. We're looking at the y values, but then when you want to explain your answer to the teacher, you must use the x values. Okay, so you could imagine us saying that when x is to the left of b, so that's all of this stuff, or when x is to the right of e. But obviously we don't do it like that. It's not an English test, we're using maths, and so we have to do a little bit, um, we've got to do it a little differently. So, but, and then another thing is we don't even know what the coordinates of B and E are. But what we can see is that those are the points where the two graphs intersect. So how do you find the two points where graphs intersect? Well, well done to you at home if you said that you make the graphs equal to each other, or you, yeah, so you use some type of simultaneous equations. So let's do that. So there I've made the two graphs equal to each other. And now from this point, you just take everything to the one side. So that's going to become minus 4x minus 5. At this moment, you can factorize or you could use the quadratic formula. I'm just going to factorize. And so you end up with 5 or minus 1. So those are the two x values. So that means that at E, its x value would be equal to 5. And then at B, the x value there is negative 1. Okay, so we said that the parabola is positive in, or above in that quadrant and that quadrant there. So we can say that, so either you could say x is an element going from negative infinity up to negative 1 or from 5 to infinity. Please pause the video if you don't understand that part, just really, you really need to make sure that that makes sense. So we're saying that it's from minus infinity, which is like all the way down there, all the way up to where the x value is minus 1. Then again, from the point where the x value is 5, onwards to infinity. 
If you prefer to use sig um, set builder notation, then you could say that x must be anything smaller than negative 1 or x can be anything greater than 5 but with this method you must just always say x is an element of all real numbers. Alright so I trust that that question now makes sense. Now we're saying for number b for which values of x is f of x times h of x positive. Now this looks weird I know but let me show you how to interpret this. Here we are okay now first of all f of x means the y values of the parabola so the y value of parabola and then g of x is the y value of the straight line. That's all it is. Now they want to know when you multiply those two together when would you end up with something that is bigger than zero. Now bigger than zero means positive. That's what they're trying to say. So how could you end up with a positive if you're multiplying two things together? Well if you multiply a positive with a positive that gives you a positive and when you multiply a negative with a negative you also get a positive. What you don't want to do is use a positive and a negative together or a negative and a positive because that's going to give you a negative. So let's look at this first part. Where can we see both graphs being positive? And remember we're talking about their y values. So what that means is where are both of the graphs above the x-axis? Well that would be from this point onwards. Now let me explain. From A onwards, we can see that the parabola starts becoming positive. See that? The y values were positive, whereas on the left of A, the y values were negative. And then the straight line is already positive in that interval. So from A onwards, we can see that both graphs are positive. Let me show you this in a different way. What I'm going to do is wherever the graphs are positive, I'm going to circle use green circles, and wherever the graphs are negative, I'm going to use red circles. So I'm going to start with the parabola. Well, we know that the parabola is positive over there and over there. See that? All the y values are positive and that graph is negative. I'm actually just going to use pink circles is negative over here. Now I'm going to do the same with the straight line. So wherever the straight line is positive I'm going to use green and wherever it's negative I'm going to use pink. So in which areas is the graph positive? Or in which areas are both of them positive? Well we can see from this point onwards. Can you see that? From that point onwards both graphs become green. If we chose this area here, well that won't work because the parabola is negative. So that's going to be from A onwards. Okay, So that's going to be one of our answers. So from A onwards, we must just remember to write that down. Now we're going to look at parts where both are negative. So we're looking for parts where both graphs are pink. So if we for example look over here, well the, the parabola is green and the straight line's pink so that's not going to work. So if you look carefully there's actually no area on this graph where both of them are negative. For example if I look here well there the, the parabola is green and the straight line is pink. So the only answer is where they're both going to be positive and that's from A onwards. So we need to know what the coordinates of A are. Well, what is A? Well, A is the x-intercept of the parabola. So to find an x-intercept, you should just, this should be so automatic in your head, you should just know that you make the y value 0 in the equation. You then go solve. You can either factorize or use the quadratic. I'm just going to factorize. Just remember, factorizing doesn't always work, but as you practice, you will start to see which ones work and which ones don't. And so what you're going to end up with is x is 4 or x is minus 1 that. So we know that a is obviously the positive one. So that means a's value is 4. So we want to we want to let all the x values be greater than 4. So we can say that x is an, um, x is an element going from 4 to infinity. Why am I not including the 4? Well, it's because of this sign over here. That doesn't have a bigger than and equal to. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to include the 4. So there's your answer. If you prefer to do set builder notation, then you say that x must be bigger than 4, but then always remember to say that x is an element of all real numbers.